This demo will be in JavaScript with a backend in Python, but bear in mind we support all the major languages and frameworks, as well as mobile and native. Once you create a project to represent your app in Sentry, it'll give you a key called a data source name or a DSN key. This is something you put in your source code where you initialize the Sentry SDK so it knows where to send the errors to, which is your account at Sentry.io. That being said, let's take a look at what this allows us to do with this web app built in React called the Tool Store. In the Tool Store here, we're going to generate an error when we purchase the items in our shopping cart. So let's start that process. We get an error, and when this happens, the user calls support, and together they're limited in their ability to debug this because they don't know where in the code the error happened. Fortunately, the developers were already notified about this via Slack, among other email and integrations that we support. This is the first problem that Sentry helps you solve in your debugging workflow, and that's getting alerted about the problems in your code. So we click the link to open this in Sentry.io, and now we've got it in the hands of the right people. There's a lot of info to help us here. So let's break this down by section, starting with the header, where we get the error type and message, followed by a quick glimpse at the impact and number of unique users affected. This event happened 406 times, and we can refer to all of these collectively as the issue in Sentry. So that's why you sometimes hear this referred to as the issue page. We can say that this is an open issue in Sentry that we're dealing with right now. An event is an instance of an issue. The stack trace shows the line of code that all of these events erred on. It's the most important thing that our grouping algorithm uses to group these into the issue. More on grouping when we get to the aggregations portion of this. Tags are diagnostic information set by the SDK regarding the individual event. So notice their values may change if you scroll between each individual event. The breadcrumbs are a history and timeline of things leading up to the error. They include things like HTTP requests, log statements from the console or server, and DOM events in JavaScript. You can set your own breadcrumbs and tags so this event is more useful for debugging. We'll talk about that when we get to the adding context section. The facet map here shows the distribution of values for the tags across all the events that make up this issue. Metadata about the host that produced this error is down here. And finally, your SDK name and version number. So now let's take a look at what actions we can take for the resolution of this problem. If this issue was auto-assigned to you already, consider reassigning it to one of the suggested assignees, or developers who updated the code behind the stack trace recently. Sentry knows this because it's based on something called the suspect commits. Suspect commits leverage Sentry's integrations with your source code management tools like GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. Suspect commits are commits from your repository that updated one or more files in the stack trace. So if we look at our stack trace here, we see app.js. So those suspect commits updated app.js or some other file in the stack trace here. You could also open up a Jira issue. We integrate with other popular issue tracking softwares as well. Once someone deploys the fixed to your app, then you can click resolve for this issue. So it's no longer open or marked as unresolved in your issue stream here. It would also be considered resolved for the current release that this issue happened in. More on releases in the upcoming sections. If you're still working on the fix, but you don't want the alert to keep coming in, then click ignore to snooze that alert. We'll show you some options later for how you can filter this event out from coming in a 407th time. We have an entire section devoted to filtering. Now, let's recap what we've accomplished so far. We installed the SDK in our app. When the error happens, the SDK captures it along with other contextual information and sends it as something called an event to Sentry.io. From there, based on any rules and configurations, someone will get alerted about it. Then on Sentry.io, you can begin triaging it. For the resolution, we use suspect commits to get it in the hands of the developer who wrote the code that is erroring. We also open a JIRA ticket, and once they committed the new code to fix this and redeploy, we marked the issue as resolved and called it a day. Now that we've got the basics down, let's learn more about the overall flow of your events as they go through Sentry and see what we can use to our advantage so that everything coming in is actionable and anything not useful is getting filtered out.